like many people over the years, I've struggled to understand climate science. And initially, I don't know, 20 years ago, I didn't think about it very much. I uh, just accepted the um, consensus or what climate scientists were telling us, that there was a problem with carbon dioxide and methane and other so-called greenhouse gases. That is, if we release, release them into the atmosphere, they build up, cause an increase in their concentration in the atmosphere. And because of something called the greenhouse effect, just automatically assumed in the 1980s to be the null hypothesis for climate change. That's a mistake, but we'll come back to that. Um, then I started to think, well, maybe it's not so bad because the predictions were not, uh, not bearing out. And I became a lukewarmist over the years. And But in the more recent two or three years, um, I've changed even more. So I, I'm not even a lukewarmist anymore. I think there's no measurable warming in the troposphere from the addition of greenhouse gases. No measurable warming. Um, the only changes that take place and we'll come back to that, but because I want to start here with climate science one, which is more basic, and I want the I want the everyday person to to follow this from the start and not make it too complicated. So basically, I want to say that I'm saying here that there is no greenhouse effect. Basically, the, in other words, there's no anomalous warming. No warming outside what you would expect from normal, from the normal gas properties that, that are possessed by gases in terms of density, pressure, and molar mass. So outside of that, there's no measurable or anomalous, I like to call it, greenhouse effect. So there is, of course, um, in in the atmosphere. Uh, a thermal gradient, that means it gets warmer as you descend through the troposphere. In particular, the troposphere is what we're talking about because that's where we live. Um, and there's also a, a thermal enhancement at the surface. And I would argue that that is a result of the thermal gradient. So and anyway, we'll come back to all this uh, in future climate science videos. I'm intending to make a series of these, getting more and more involved. So that, uh, but but I don't really want to lose the layperson here straight away. So I want this to be a fairly simple explanation of why I think we have to return to what I consider to be the correct null hypothesis of climate change, which is one where there's no unproven effects in the troposphere. In other words, the greenhouse effect is unproven, therefore you throw it out. It's not necessary. Um, so here, here we'll just take an example, a simple example. Here we're looking at two cars in the sun. Two identical cars. Now, uh, imagine it's a 30 degree centigrade day, for example, um, which is what, about 84 degrees Fahrenheit for our American friends. And one of them has all its windows tightly closed up. And the other one, you have to imagine this, has all its windows wide open including the boot, even the doors, if you like. So it's got everything wide open. Now, if it's 30 degrees centigrade in the air outside the cars, what will be the temperature inside the car, inside the cars, in the shed, inside the cars? Now, in the one um, where the windows are all closed, you might anticipate that it would be quite hot in there after, say, an hour or two, and it would be. Uh, it might get to 40, 50 degrees 
centigrade. But in the car with all the windows open and doors open, what will happen? What will be the temperature in the shade? Well, logic tells you it will be the same temperature as it is outside the car. And you have to relate this to the atmosphere. Our atmosphere, not contained by this glass envelope that you have in a car. The atmosphere is essentially unconstrained. So in other words, you can get convection. You get movement of air up and down and sideways. Uh, and you can get expansion. So if the air heats up, it will expand. That's what will happen. And the car with open windows and doors, there will be no, uh, the temperature, air temperature in the shade inside the car will not be higher than outside. It will be identical. So this is just a simple example, an illustration to show the, the experiments that they're doing in regard to uh, greenhouse gas, gases all involve constraining the gas and measuring the temperature inside when you uh, put um, insulation on it, shortwave, shortwave radiation from the sun. So they're, they're really not representative of the atmosphere, which is unconstrained and subject to convection. So now, in the troposphere where we live, heat transfers occur through, heat is carried around by, by convection and other means than radiation. Only a small percentage is carried of heat transfers carried by radiation. Now in the mesosphere and the stratosphere, yes, um, radiative interactions, radiative transfers of heat predominate. But not in the troposphere they don't. That's because of the pressure. You've got a higher pressure from the tropopause downwards through the troposphere. You've got a, a pressure of over 10 kilopascals. Uh, so 0 0.1 bar and down to the surface where it's 1 bar. And in, in the, that pressure regime, uh, you, get, you get convection taking place and heat transfer due to that. So, and of course, expansion can take place. So if there's a forcing to the atmosphere, the entire atmosphere will expand and cool again. So that forcing is subject to 100% negative feedback. So just to recap this, there's um, no empirical evidence at all that there is a greenhouse effect involving carbon dioxide in our troposphere. Uh, there is evidence that CO2 causes cooling in the mesosphere and stratosphere, but there's um, nothing about warming in the, in the troposphere. This is simply being assumed. So we'll carry on with this in, um, in part two.